Do you still use the second derivative? Do you use the first derivative or the original function? So plug that in and then find out what those numbers are. That's going to give you the inflection points themselves. So second derivative tells you concavity, but to find the points, you're going back to your original function. Tell you what, why don't you guys handle the two? I'll take care of the zero. Sound like a plan? Be nice to you guys. <coughs> Jeez, I hope I can do it now. It's a lot of pressure. Did you get zero twelve? Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Sixteen. Cool. Those are my two inflection points. Came from 0 and 2. Those are the points. We knew there were inflection points because the concavity changes there. Raise your hand if you're okay with this so far. Good deal. Let's try one more, then we're going to wrap all this stuff together. You ready for it? Mm -hmm. okay, one more. <coughs> but I'm going to have you do most of it. So let's start with 2x. Same question, we're going to find inflection points. Uh, x minus 1 to the 1 third. What are you going to have to do to find inflection points for this nasty looking function? Huh? Well, what derivative, first or second? Why don't you find the first derivative first? That might be a good, good starting plot spot. Find the first derivative right now. Let's make it prettier and then I'll have you do the second derivative. So go for it. <coughs> So first derivative, what do you need to do for the first derivative here? Chain rule or general power rule, however you speak about it, that's fine. But you need to know that you're going to do the one-third. Do you change the x minus 1? Not right now. To which power? Yeah, don't forget the power. Uh, some people have noticed on your homework, you're doing the one-third, but then you ignore the power. That's kind of a big deal, right? To make a big deal for you. So negative two thirds, good. And then that's it. So far so good. Ends up being that that was actually it because the derivative is one. But I do need to show the work. One third x minus one to the negative two thirds times one because that derivative of x is one so that that's that's done that's our first derivative did you make it that far <coughs> okay now you have an option that was like five people did you all make it that far yeah okay you're getting lazy about your hand raising aren't you mm. you could have the option of moving this down to a denominator right to a positive however that's gonna be a little bit more difficult to take a derivative of so with derivatives leave it that way until you get your second derivative. So from right here, do you see you can just apply the general power rule again? Go ahead and do that. Take your second derivative from right here, if you haven't done so already. Negative two ninths. You seeing that too? <laughs> to the negative. <coughs> of course, that was a general power rule or the chain rule. But the derivative of that inside piece that's still going to be just one for you.
So let's make this thing a little bit prettier. How do we make this thing a little bit prettier? Since that's a 1, this will be negative 2 over <coughs> 9 cube root x minus 1 to the fifth. That was a lot of math right there. Can you follow that? You sure? There's a lot of stuff in our head. We took the derivative and made sure it was 1, so it's not changing anything. That's pretty much gone. Negative 2 stays on the, on the numerator. 9 is on the denominator. That negative exponent, that's power over root, but it's on a denominator. Power over root. Feel good about that one? What do you do for the second derivative test? Okay, so 0. Now, this is interesting. When's the numerator going to be equal to 0? It's not. It's a constant. <coughs> so you don't get any values from the numerator here. That says that nowhere are you going to have an act. Nowhere are you going to have a, a point of the numerator that's going to make it equal to 0. You're not going to have that value. However, we do have some, some points on the denominator. Do you see that we're going to have to have that as well? Since that's on the denominator, we go, okay, where is this going to be undefined? Where do we have an undefined second river? That could also give us a change in concavity. Let's look at that. Where? Yeah, that's nicely factored for you, right? X minus 1, that's the only thing that could possibly give us 0 on the bottom is X minus 1. So we know that from here, <coughs> X minus 1 equals 0, that's going to give us a possible inflection point. Do you feel okay with this so far? Let's make our table up. There's only one number. So with our one number, we've got x equals 1. That means there's only two intervals to check. We can check 0 for one of them. We can check 2 for one of them, or well, wherever you want to check. I would probably check 2. That's a nice number. So if we check 0, we're going to check it in where? The original functions, first derivative or second derivative? That'll give us concavity. So let's, let's all try that. <coughs> Remember, I really care about positive and negative. That's what I care about. So when I try 0 into my second derivative, I'm going to get, oh my gosh, negative or positive? Let's try it. What's 0 minus 1? Negative. To the fifth power? Negative. Still negative. Cube root? Negative. Still negative. Times 9? Negative. Ne negative over a negative gives you a positive. That's concave up. That's the shape of that. Now let's do the second one. Do the second one. If I do the second one, so f of f double prime of 2. Plug in 2, it gave me kind of a nice number. 2 minus 1 is? That's positive. Fifth power? Cube root? Times 9? Negative value of a positive? Concave down. Is that an inflection point? Is that a spot where we're going to change uh, concavity? Yes. Yeah, we're going from concave up, <coughs> concave up, to <laughs> concave down. Yeah, for sure. Now find the point. All you got to do is plug that number in to find the actual inflection point. So I want an inflection point. It'll be one comma something. Where do I plug it in? <coughs> Original one. That gives you points. So plug in one. You get one minus one. That's zero. Can you take a cube root of zero? Wait. <coughs> Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Zero inside of a radical? Always fine. Zero. That's your inflection point. So this goes back to my original function, g of one. And that's how we get that zero. By a show of hands, how many people feel okay with our second derivative test? Yeah, no. Good, all right. 
You ready to put it together? Let's do it. Yay. Let's do both the first and the second derivative test on this next function and see what it actually means. This is going to be kind of interesting to you. By the way, this is the start of how you would graph a function without a calculator. Now, even some nasty looking functions, you can do it with this stuff, all right? I'll show you the, the end all of this in section, I think, 3.6, two sections. How you do curve sketching in general, curve sketching of anything that you really want to. And we'll be able to use all this stuff together. This is like the second little baby step. Here we have two more steps to make. Okay, we're going to do both the first and second derivative test, but I want you to do most of it. So right now, can you please perform for me the first derivative test? What I want to see is first derivative, set equal to zero, find my critical numbers, and make the top portion of my table. Do that. Did you get that for your first derivative? Okay. Did you solve it all the way down? Were you able to factor it, I hope? To me, it looks like we should be getting x equals negative 2 and x equals 4. By a show of hands, how many of you have got x equals negative 2 and 4? Good. You just found your critical numbers. That's fantastic. The critical numbers stand for the places where your slope could be 0, where you could possibly be changing from increasing to decreasing. So right here on our, on our first group of tests, we got, okay, x is 4. We got x is negative 2. We're going to get negative 2. And we're going to get 4. That's our first derivative test. Now we get to plug in some numbers. So why don't you do that on your own. Plug in some values for each interval. I want maybe negative 3 here. Maybe 0 here and maybe 5 here. It doesn't have to be those numbers with something in that interval. Remember, we're plugging these into our first derivative, not the function, that gives you points. The first derivative of 